Hello ladies and gentlemen, ladettes and lads, welcome to a new video and this time you join me on F1 2019. Now I know some of you have read the video with your mind in the gutter and if you've done that you should be very ashamed of yourself and you really need to have a good look at yourself because I mean I did the same thing so. Yeah. But nah, let's, let's get serious for a minute. So this is the Pro Exhibition F1 Esports race that was the feeder race to the Virtual GP, which is taking place because of the coronavirus delaying all the real-life Formula 1 races. So it's very simple stuff. It pretty much follows the rules for the Pro Series in the F1 Esports Championship. Two drivers represent each team. Me and Danny Berezny were representing Alfa Romeo this time out. So let's get into it and see how we did. So as you can see, we've loaded into Quali, and it's a, an 18-minute qualifying. It's the short qualifying mode on F1 one and uh yeah it's wet so that took us all a bit by surprise we've done loads of practice sessions there was no wet um obviously i've done a few, couple of laps in the wet a few laps but probably not enough um but i always feel like in the wet on this game i can adapt fairly quickly because you're driving at such a slower rate you have more time to think and you can actually hit your apexes and control the throttle quite easily um so i'm loading the setup but like you should do, you check the forecast for the race and because it's part of Fermi conditions, you carry the setup you have in quali into the race. So I'm putting a dry setup on because I don't want to be slow in the race with a wet setup. I want to run my dry setup in quali, make the most of it, try and get as far up the grid as possible because everyone's going to do the same thing in terms of the setup. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I was quite happy it was wet. It was a bit of a, a level playing field. My pace in the dry was good in quali. Uh, PB was a 19 point... Uh, 19 I wish uh, 29.4 so uh, yeah there was a, a lot of potential there but you know I wasn't unhappy it was wet so I mean the gist of quality was because it's dynamic mode on the weather it started off fully wet got drier as the session went on and we ended up being on the intermediate tire so what I'm going to do is just cut straight to my best quality lap which is at the very end uh, yeah let's have a look Okay then, so we're starting the lap. We've got a bit of a gap in front of us too. I think that's a Ferrari. I think it might be Tunisia. And going into turn one, I put it into high mode on the ERS. And you just have to be so careful on the turning. If you go in too hot, you'll just slide straight onto the grass basically. So uh, you really have to do rein it in in the, in the wet conditions. For turn two, it's so gentle on the throttle it's ridiculous I'm like on 30% throttle going through the gears and as soon as I feel this traction just boot the throttle into overtake brake fairly late still down into high again on the ERS and then just be really easy on the braking you know you don't want to lock if you lock up these tyres in the wet you can say goodbye to your apex because you're not meeting it and after sector one we're just over two and a half tenths up uh, back into high mode for sector two just because it makes it easier to get traction if there's less battery deployment um, and we're going through this section with fairly high gears going down to low gears for this next left hand a very slow section again really easy to spin the rear wheels up and then once you've spun the rear wheels up you usually don't get them back because you've overheated them too fast so I think we probably left a lot of time on the table through this left hander. We braked really early, hit the curb, and then we were quite clumsy through the rest of this section. We got on power on this long right hander, which is tricky in the dry, let alone in the wet. Um, we're trying to stick on that dry line. And yeah, I think all the time in that quality lap was basically back of that left hander. We just braked too early. Um, but I didn't want to brake too late and mess the lap up completely. So one of them. Um, down into high for the final hairpin. Break pretty much where you were breaking the dry because you're going down the straight at a slower rate because there's no DRS. The wet kind of creates more drag. Um, and then, yeah, into the final corner. Fourth gear over the curb to the finish line. Tunisia set a 42.5. We set a 43.0. So just over four temps slower, which it was frustrating because, you know, P10, I did feel like there was more there. I really did. And this is not an excuse video. Let's get that out there. But... What I do think I did wrong was loaded the incorrect setup. I had a better setup for the race in terms of it being dry, which would have been a better setup in the wet than the one I was running. Um, that combined with the mistake I made at the hairpin or the one before the long right-hander, yeah, I think, you know, a top five was possible in quality, no, no doubt about it. But um, such is F1 Esports, if you make any form of error, if it's loading the setup, if it's driving, if it's, you know, tyre warm-up, overheating anything you will be punished and that's what you've got to learn if you're going into f1 esports okay so you can see by the final classification there with p12 and you know four and a, four and a bit temps of pole basically five temps but it's so close from seventh to twelfth or even beyond that it's within a tenth of a second so it's just insane and we easily lost time in that hairpin as we were talking about so you know fine fine margins i mean the 42.5 in those conditions 
under that pressure with a dry setup is very impressive from What's the top guys. You guys um, but you know, it, that is what it is. It's the yeah, top I mean, uh, of the top yeah, and the best of the best on F1. Uh, so into the race, I was thinking there was a chance to get a decent result here. Obviously, everyone's on fresh tires because you know it's going to be dry in the race. We run inters in the in the qualifying session, all on dry setups. I thought you know it's time to get the elbows out, time to be a bit aggressive, and hopefully we can get a decent result. Now we're just going into the grid spot. The setup I've loaded, as I said earlier, is the wrong one. I've not done a practice race or any race laps at all with this setup. So, you know, it's not ideal. It's not a big excuse, but it's not ideal. Uh, and on the start here, we don't get the best start, I must be honest. We were kind of flustered a little bit and it could have been better. It wasn't horrendous, but you can see Michael there just completely shot away from us. He was starting on the row behind us and he's somehow in front of us. So, you know, there's always room for improvement. A lot of guys on the medium where we are, uh, and you can see there Michael goes up the inside, hits the McLaren of Sally, and then almost goes round. So uh, quite a messy start from some people, but you know, you've know, got to make moves, otherwise you're never going to make any overtakes. So I can understand the mentality that, you know, go hard or go home. And we were arguably a little bit too safe, um, but our poor start didn't help us in the slightest. Don't know how I didn't break my front wing there on Lucas's car, um, but I tried to hold the position there from Fabrizio, but he still got it in the end. So... We're 14th after the first half of a lap, which is not ideal, um, but it's a train. So, you know, I'm just thinking if everyone plays it smart, everyone stays behind each other, although Bonnie's trying to go up the inside there, you know, if we just go with each other, stay in DRS, then, you know, everyone's got a chance. Um, so, unfortunately, that's not how it panned out, as you'll see later into the video, but... <laughs> um, we're, we're right in the mix of it and going into this next right-hander, it's quite hard to be fair. It's worth mentioning that adapting from, you know, going from qualifying in the in the intermediate conditions into a dry race, you know, with fuel load, with, as I said earlier, setup I'd not used in the race, it takes a lot, you know, and just to hit those, those dry breaking points, those dry getting on the throttle moments, you know, it's all different. So you've got to really be sharp in the way that you can just turn it on. There's no, you can't, you know, get used to it. You can't take a lap or two to get warm. Otherwise, you'll just get eaten alive. And you can see there, we hit Fab in the hairpin there slightly, but no damage for the pair of us. Nothing kind of nurtured, nothing gained. And going into lap two, again, in the train, just trying to hang on, because I know DRS is coming on lap three. You've got to play it smart. There's no point pushing too hard at this point. We're on the medium. It's the guys at the front, because Danny, who started sixth, he said to me he was going on the soft. So the front guys will be on the soft tyre. They're going to box around lap three four and we're going to go to like lap seven eight or nine so we're going a bit later but we should be quicker at the end that's why I, in my head i was thinking if we can just stay with them god knows what can happen all right so a bit further into the race we're in lap four now and there's a bit of a train developing behind marcel kiefer who is we're all on the medium tire so no one's got a disadvantage here and they're fighting like crazy and fab almost goes spinning around there um and we're going to get a bit of a run on him going into the hairpin. We don't want to make too much of a move. I don't want to cause us or lose us time. Um, so I'm quite happy staying behind him at this point. Um, although I do try and go around the outside there, but it's never going to work. And you can see we're just following Fab nice and closely. Lucas and Floris, I believe that is, in front of us, properly fighting there, which is not helping them at all. It's letting Marcel get away, if anything. Uh, and you can see here, I think Lucas goes off the track, comes back on quite aggressively, but he has no choice, obviously, because he's going to go on the grass, you know, so really aggressive stuff from the pair of them and it's backing us up into them um, and to the guys behind me as well so we're running p10 i think some of the front guys have box so it's not a net p10 and as long as we get a good drive off here there's you know a chance to kind of leapfrog all of these guys so i'm thinking they're all going to pull out and lose their slipstream i'm going to get a slipstream and there's a chance there i could make a three and one hamilton at bahrain if you remember but um as you can see in the braking zone, it doesn't quite work out. I go really deep, lock, and then into fab. So, yeah, not the smoothest driving at all. But I felt like I had to make the move. This is on stream. This was crazy with the broadcasting angles. You know, all of us fighting. We're losing so much time. That's what really frustrates me watching it back. Um, and it kind of stopped any of us getting a decent result. But when you look at it, one, it's good content. And two, it was fun. It was really good fun. Uh, no one lost their front wing. It was fairly clean. It could have been cleaner, not going to lie. Um, but yeah, lap five now, really, really kind of hurting our race. You know, we're losing seconds each lap just from fighting each other. So behind Floris, 
trying to defend and attack at the same time because I, I can see everyone's very up for it. You know, if you leave a gap, people are going to go for it. So we lost a bit of ground there to Flores actually. But you know, going into the rest of the race, I just thought you know, keep the tyres in check. We'll try and do an undercut on the guys in front, even if it means at the end of the race we're going to be struggling on tyres. Because I just felt you know we're losing so much time here. Even if I lose a little bit at the end of the race, it might benefit us. Okay, and then on lap seven. Fab is behind me. We're both going to box and do the mother of all undercuts uh, with seven laps to go. So it's not even, well, it's just over halfway in the race and we're going on softs. Very ambitious, very audacious, but it was the only way that our races were going to come back alive. And you can see the leaders there already going past us. That's the gap they had to us. Uh, almost the whole pit stop, which is so frustrating, but it is what it is. Um, and then coming out the pits, we just stay in front of Fab on the softs and we've got a free track a clear track ahead of us so we thought you know if we have a really good outlap we can jump or leapfrog and get a gap to the guys we were fighting originally so uh you, you treat it you treat it as a quality lap you know you put the same ers modes pretty much you try and save a little bit but you do push harder than you would on a standard race lap just to make the difference as much as possible sebastian vettel in singapore 2019 great example on that same lap towards the end of the lap, Fab goes up the inside. I didn't defend it. I didn't want to lose any time, so I just let him go. I stay in a very low ERS mode. You'll see on the next pit straight, I get DRS. I could easily get him back. There's just no point, though. I mean, there's literally no point because uh, I'm not going to run away from him if I overtake him. I haven't got the pace to do that. You know, we all know Fab's a great driver anyway, but uh, as you can see, Michael behind us is a solid three seconds off now, so that undercut was massively OP. Um, yes, at the end of the race, he's going to have slightly better tyres, but I thought at this point that me and Fab had done wonders. We got a gap, we can kind of progress and get away from them and they'll continue to fight. And then, you know, we might not finish top five or anything, but we've definitely beaten the pack. So at this point, feeling very positive. Uh, unfortunately, the rest of the race was kind of negative, but <laughs> we'll get into it. So on to lap 10 and you can see that Marcel and I think that's Bono, uh, they their outlaps or inlaps even were a bit stronger than Michael so they've ended up being closer to us on fresher tyres so they're obviously going to be quick uh, and again I don't see the point of defending just yet so Fab defends he obviously thinks I'm going to absolutely send it but uh, we've got Marcel on our inside we defend for Marcel and we do maintain position but we're kind of where we started in terms of we're in the same pack of guys um, we, me and Fab, we were strong on our outlaps. Uh, I think I got fastest lap of the race with the softs, but it just wasn't enough. Uh, if we broke the RS from the from Marcel, for example, it might have been enough. But even still, you know that two laps fresher tyre that Marcel's got does make all the difference. So um, you can see we're battling through turns one and two here on the exit of turn two. Very close, but you know it, the contact model in this game is fairly decent, to be fair. So. Uh, no comings together. Marcel goes up the inside, but we, again, break fairly late, go around the outside. Fab's getting away at this point, so I'm thinking, this is not good. Um, if we could just stay in DRS, though, it will be all right. Uh, but, you know, at this point, I was thinking, we're in the same pack. It's going to be a battle to the rest of the race. We're going to struggle at the end with the tyres, so I was trying to drive fairly conservatively just to make sure at the end I wasn't driving on ice. Um, but, yeah, not ideal. Now, to be fair, it's to be said that my racecraft in this I went in with a slightly wrong approach I wanted to go in quite uh, reserved and just you know focus on the driving don't go crazy or be mega aggressive uh, I don't think we were aggressive enough I think that was the problem and you can see here this is a prime example where you know Bono goes up the inside slightly uh, we do defend the position and then we don't turn in enough and we get stuck on Bono Flores goes up the inside of both of us uh, and yeah that's uh, position lost again we've lost time even more time to Marso and Fab who we were sticking with it's just frustrating you know it's such fine margins that you know you need a really 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 strong pace to gap someone when they're behind you on a circuit like China um, and we just didn't have it and you can see Floris there kind of nudges us out to the the white line we lose a place there to Bono because of it and now we've got Michael on our rear end so it's just going from bad to worse obviously me and Fab are on worn tyres Fab's making the most of it he's gapped with Marcel uh, and he's going along with Marcel quite nicely whereas we've been caught up in the pack a bit more and yeah that that raw pace that I honestly think I had with the other setup uh, we just didn't have with this one it burned the tyres out a lot more quickly 
Um, so in qualifying, this other, this other setup was probably a bit slower. Um, but because it was a wet quality race scenario, I should have used it. And I just forgot. I just did not use it. Very frustrating. You see Michael up the inside there. Completely fair move. Just frustrating on our part. And down in 15th. And that is where we stay for the rest of the race. So we do just about tag along with these guys. Uh, we do lose the rears towards the end of the race. Just because, you know, we boxed mega early. But also this setup just didn't allow me to drive with any kind of consistency uh, you can see there was sliding mid corner um, and it's there's so many things to work on for me in this game that uh, you know the cliche of me doing all these games and doing all right in them and being near the front of all of them it, I think it needs to change so uh, in terms of my channel and where my direction's going you'll see a lot more F1 content just because I'll be playing F1 more um, than any other game uh, if I play any other games at all it'll be very rare uh, and with F1 Esports in 2020 not being too far away, you know, it's already April, I need to focus. So, um, yeah, this was kind of a, a wake-up call for me, a wake-up call for uh, people in Veloce and my team. It's not easy. It's so hard. The level was the highest, in my opinion, in racing esports. So, you know, to be at the top or even compete near the top, you need to be firing on all cylinders. Everything needs to go right. The practice has got to be put in. And it hasn't just, it's not been going that way for me at the moment because obviously, you know, I mean, the day before this, I was doing the 12 hour Suzuka in ACC. That's not what you'd do if you were doing an F1 Esports Pro race. So I need to treat it in that same manner. Um, so, yeah, it was a learning curve. I will learn from it. And hopefully later in the season, I can look back and say that was the right decision. And then across the line, 13th, I think, yeah, we were 15th on the road, but 13th because of penalties. So, you know, that's some consolation, I suppose. But, you know, there's a lot to work on, isn't there? So uh, I know kind of where I need to work on. Uh, I don't know how to do it yet. Otherwise, you know, I would have done it. But, um, yeah, it's going to be a long year. It's going to be a, a year of hard work. But uh, I think it's possible. But we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. It's going to be a, a fun road, nevertheless. But um, I want to say thanks to Danny for helping me with some setups and practicing with me. Uh, Yarno, the engineer, if you didn't hear him in the background in that race, he was helping me and Danny with some uh, engineering things and just who's on what penalty and etc. etc. So that was really useful. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching the video. Give it a like if you liked it. Comment what you want to say and do sub to the channel. I really appreciate it. But I guess until the next video or live stream, whatever that may be, stay safe, take care, and I'll see you soon.